After a week of solitude and peace, the beginning of this week was contrasted with chaos and indecisions. Our plans to see Yosemite weren't happening, the surrounding areas were covered in clouds and rain, and it felt like we were never going to find a spot, until we wound up somewhere unexpected, but perfect. Today is a moving location slash chore day and I'm super excited because these are always my favorite days full of movement and activity and excitement and coffee. So that's probably why I get so excited. Look, it's my little ritual to get coffee every time I go into town. So yay. And then at the end of the day when your tanks are full your water tanks are full, your gas is full, everything is just done. It's so satisfying. So let's go. We arrived in the city of San Jose and decided to stay for the night. We were lucky enough to find a public parking lot that allowed free overnight parking, as long as we registered our vans with security. And it even had a little fenced-in area for Athena to run around in. With all that taken care of, we walked around a nearby plaza that had restaurants, bars, and shops. We decided to go out to eat and to get a drink. Okay. <laughs> Maybe two or three drinks. Yosemite seemed like a solid plan until we were halfway there and realized a major road was shut down and made a lot of the park inaccessible. Or if you wanted to access parts of it, it would take two and a half hours. Luckily, we found a spot off the side of the highway to stay the night while we frantically looked for a spot to spend the week. After looking at many areas nearby, we noticed most of the places will be covered in clouds and showered with rain the whole week. So we went in a direction that I was not planning. Hello from a little oasis in Nevada. Hopefully you can't hear the wind. I'm very, very happy we ended up coming here. This place is absolutely gorgeous. Athena loves the water. It's so healing to be by a body of water. I didn't know how badly I needed to be by water. Something primal in me <laughs> loves water. So I've just been journaling. I've always been someone who writes in a journal, but lately I've been trying to be a little bit more intentional with it and more consistent. And it's been really nice to just get things out of my head and onto paper. It's so, so helpful. I have two journals now, one for YouTube and one for personal stuff. I really like that separation, but having an actual real journal that's separate from my normal journal and not having it in my iPhone notes makes it more real, I guess. So I really enjoy writing things down. Sticking with this week's theme of unexpected events, it started pouring down rain and there was a thunder. I'm kind of laughing right now because we came to the spot in Nevada to escape the rain and cold weather and thunderstorms that were everywhere else. And now it's raining here and there's thunder, but there's no cold weather. So I am thankful about that. I'm currently holed up in my van and Athena's asleep at my feet. I think the rest of the night is probably going to be working on YouTube things and also journaling. When I give Athena food and she's not hungry um, or she's finished, she buries it. The rest of the days were spent with my head in a laptop working. The days were warm with a cool breeze, which made working with my door open wonderful and very relaxing. This has been on my mind for a long time. 
like months. So there's this excerpt from the book The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, which is a very well-known book, and I'm sure so many of you have read it. There's a part in that book where she talks about a fig tree. Each fig represents a path in life that she could have taken. So one is maybe she's a wife with a husband and children, and another one, she's a businesswoman and independent. If she chooses one fig, all the other figs are gone. You can't choose more than one fig. They all rot away and they're gone. So she's sitting under this fig tree and she can't choose what she wants. And so all the figs start falling down around her and rotting. And I think maybe I've been thinking about it a lot lately because I've honestly written about this exact same thing before just kind of that thought that when you choose a path and like where you want to go in life other opportunities close my fig that i chose is living in a van and making youtube videos you can't help but think about all the things that you have left behind or decided not to pursue and i think if i were to do it again i would still choose this same path to get to where i am now to get to travel in a van and to share it um, online with all of you. It doesn't change the fact that I still have thought about that damn fig tree so much. So I'm about to try to make, am I making? Oh yeah, <laughs> biscuits and gravy. Ooh, wait, you're getting some. Oh, look. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay now it's open. Oh! Okay, so first thing you're gonna wanna do is preheat your oven to 350 and then bake them for about 16 minutes. You just wanna make sure they get a nice golden brown color on the top and on the bottom. Biscuits made from scratch are the best, obviously, but if you don't have the time or the space, these kind of biscuits work perfectly. Next thing you wanna do is heat the butter in a skillet or a pot over medium high heat and then cook your chopped onions for about 8 to 10 minutes. You just want them to be a little bit golden. You can add garlic here too if you want, but um, we didn't have any garlic. You can also add vegetarian sausage if you'd like, but we didn't have any of that either. <laughs> the next thing you want to do is sprinkle about 4 tablespoons of flour, and mix it up, and cook for another minute. The next step is to pour in about two and a half cups of a mixture of milk and cream, or you can just use milk, or I used half and half. If you want it to be vegan, you can use a vegan alternative, and you just stir it. And then my favorite part is adding the vegetable bouillon. This stuff is amazing. It just adds so much flavor. And then you want to add salt and pepper, and you want it to get thickened, so bring the mixture to a simmer and then stir until it's thick. And then once it starts to get thick, add sage and thyme. I didn't, I couldn't find my sage. Sage and thyme are amazing together, so definitely add both of them if you have them. And then simmer for about another two minutes, and then add salt and pepper. Is it recording? I'm taking over the cooking show, everybody. Yum. <laughs> and then when it's all done, serve over the biscuits. I'll put the recipe that I used in the description as well if anyone is interested in this. What do you guys think? Should I do a cooking live stream here on YouTube sometime? Maybe? I'm just thinking about how everything in my life has led up to this very moment right here, this exact moment. Every decision, every thought that I've had, every feeling has led me here exactly right now. And you guys are here with me right now, so thank you. <laughs> thank you for experiencing this with me. Thank you for going on these journeys with me and thank you for being here with me. Seriously, <laughs> thank you. I'm eternally grateful for my life. I don't even know how to cook these. What are the directions? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> she just
just buried it and now she's already digging it up. 